Hello everyone, I'm Norman Wahlberger and we're learning how to play Go. So today we're going to talk a little bit about fighting skills, starting from a very specific corner position that will allow us to explore a lot of interesting uh, techniques and considerations that you will want to adapt as you begin to uh, learn how to fight in the game of Go. So in this game, black has played at the 4-4 point and white has made an attachment here. This used to be considered a not a very good move, but actually the bots play this quite routinely in handicap games, so it's uh, perhaps not so bad. Now black has a number of options. Uh, typically black can play on the outside or play on the inside, maybe even just uh, stand like this. But perhaps the simplest move to understand is the 3-3 three, three point, taking territory in the corner, and that's also a place for making a shape and eyes. Okay, if uh, white uh, extends, this is one possibility. Another possibility is for white to uh, cut. That's a little bit more uh, complicated. But with this extension here, uh, then black's obvious um, answer is this one. So this is very simple to understand because of the importance in keeping your stones connected. This is a, a simple and easy shape to understand. Now white is typically going to make an extension here so that white has a base. So white is happy with that base. And it's a two point jump because white really has a wall of one here. This stone doesn't count as part of the wall. Okay, So a wall of one means you get to jump two. Of course you can jump whatever you want but this is considered reasonable. On the other hand black has a wall of two so black is happy to jump three points. Okay, that's a balanced position for black and white and um, we can leave it at that. Now uh, another possibility is for white to play here. That's also possible. Looking to to later on uh, make an extension in this direction. Uh, for example if black plays here then white can make a little bit more of a, a large scale uh, structure on, on, on the side here. Now another possibility for uh, for a black is to seize the corner more directly and put a little bit more pressure on black by extending down here. That makes it harder for white to make a base on the side um, and maybe gives black a little bit more potential for territory. White will still want to extend to form a position on the side and now black can make an extension to balance what he has and to protect this cut which is now there. So so maybe black could play here. Or maybe a little bit tighter would be here. So uh, you see at, at some point black may want to attack these white stones and in a position like this white can always play here. This is an important point because it's sort of threatening to either cut here or, or Atari. So black typically wants to play here to preserve a biggish territory here, but this does allow white to settle uh, himself. Now, if black is really intent on making a strong attack, then actually this very solid kind of connection, okay, which is which is a slow move, but it's it's solid, is also reasonable. And actually, if you are a beginner, I would suggest that you think about moves like this. So creating reasonably tight uh, obviously connected groups of stones is a great thing. Beginners tend to splash stones around sort of randomly and then they end up being cut in, separated into lots of little pieces and then all those little pieces or a lot of them end up dying. Okay, So a good way of preventing that is to make yourself um, pretty solid um, secure shapes and then think about extending from the, those shapes. All right, so that's certainly uh, an option, even though um, probably most professional players would not would not play that. What another possibility is for black is to maybe even play somewhere else entirely. This is called tanuki in Japan. It's a very important idea, the idea that, okay, I'm just going to leave this situation. Hopefully the situation uh, will not fall under too strong an attack. Okay, that's that's Black's idea. So that Black has time to see some important point, typically in one of the other corners. So it's an interesting question now. You know, is this Tanuki actually justified, or can White actually create havoc um, to the, these stones? So there's a number of ways of attacking uh, this. One would be sort of at a, at a distance. You know, playing something like this, or 
um, or playing something like this with sort of an idea of cutting uh, him off from the center if he wants to make a small life. Or um, maybe a peeping there, this is called a peep, directly adjacent to the cutting spot, basically forcing black to to connect. And then and then white can, can jump out, um, you know, something like this, depending on how strongly white wants to attack. Or maybe even a play down here if white is feeling um, very uh, aggressive, okay? Another move in this situation is to sort of slide in and look at this position from, from here. So it's not actually a cut, but it's certainly threatening a cut. And um, if black connects here, then this stone is in a happier position than the one right above it because it has more liberties. So white can make a, kind of an extension in this uh, direction here and later on um, move uh, to this point here, establishing you know, more of a base and cutting down on Black's eyes. Black still has to worry about, about the eye shape of this group, okay? And uh, if white gets one or two more moves, then this can be uh, under attack very suddenly. So Black has to probably think about that. But what about the most obvious uh, fierce move, which is this one, okay, the direct cut. That's something that should be considered. and. If it works, it's often a very powerful thing to do because then you're separating the opponent. Now, in this case, black has more or less two responses. Um, the submissive one is to play from underneath and drive out a little bit into the side to try to get enough room for a live group. So this is uh, something that black can do, but it's very favorable to white because this outside influence here is worth considerably more than the black territory. So this would be a, a very big advantage for white. Actually, in a game, black would probably only play up to this point because every further push that you make allowing white to make influence along the third line and you to make territory in the second line is, is bad for you. Okay, so you, you want to minimize that kind of pushing. Um, and if you leave it like this, go somewhere else. You know, maybe you could... Uh, go here or something like this to try to somehow reduce the significance of white's wall. In that case, um, white can't so easily kill this group. Uh, if white plays a move like this, then you can um, make some, some eye shape uh, in the corner. Okay, but this is still a, a submissive uh, kind of uh, move and, and most players would not want to do that. Although maybe in certain circumstances where uh, the outside position was different, you might just want to establish a quick life and, and be done with it and, and move on to somewhere else. So in that case, uh, this would be perhaps very reasonable. But at the beginning of the game like this, um, Black is more inclined to just play here. And, and the question is, does this actually capture this white this white clique of two stones? And the answer is, um, yes, it does. Because um, white cannot escape. White cannot kill these two stones first because these two stones have altogether one, two, three, four liberties. Well, this group only has two liberties. So in a race to capture, black is clearly going to capture these two stones before white plays or captures these ones. So for example, if white plays here, black will play here. Maybe white plays here. But now this move is Atari on white. And if white even connects the doesn't matter, um, it's dead. So um, that's not going to work. The only other thing that might work is to try to capture this one here. Okay, so white Atari's this black stone is able to capture this. Well, then all of white's problems disappear because then white is all connected and these stones in the corner are dead because they're, they're no chance of making eyes there. But black will extend here. Now the question is can white capture these two stones? Well, um, in this case, no. So this might look like a ladder. It's the beginning of a ladder shape. But unfortunately, this move here actually puts this stone into Atari. So white cannot continue with the ladder shape because white has to pull this uh, out first. And in this case, black could even push here once again, uh, again, threatening this. So white would have to defend that and then come back to, to um, kill these two stones and uh, white's position um, more or less collapses. This would be like game over between uh, two uh, equal equal players. Okay, um, so that's not going to work. Um, 
what if um, black uh, white try something like this okay uh, one two three and so can white ca well white can't capture white if white tries to surround this uh, can't do it and if white tries something like this or some kind of loose gator um, kind of thing it's um, first of all it, it's too weak but in any case black doesn't need to worry black can just come and kill these stones actually in this case it would probably be uh, simpler just to do what um, Actually, in this case, Black would probably play something like this out here. Atari. Okay, White connects. Atari. White connects. And then grab those three stones. Okay, so White is losing a lot of points uh, for not much gain. There's still a lot of weaknesses in White's position. Okay, so this certainly doesn't work. Um, so that's... Uh, no, there's no way of rescuing these two stones. That means that this is a mistake. Okay, so that that means that this cut here is a mistake in this case. White is not going to want to play this. White's going to play what, rather one of these approach moves that we talked about earlier. But I want to uh, show you what happens if the situation is a little bit different. And suppose that black uh, after black plays here, white plays this high move, sort of you know, with the idea of making a bigger territory on this side. And now suppose that black plays uh, down here again, trying to sort of thwart white's general intentions on this side. Now, now this cut is a little bit different, you see, because now when black plays here and does the same thing as before, now this stone is in a different position. So the result is different. In fact, the result is that um, white can capture this stone. So there's a ladder involved here, okay? But the ladder is not from this side, but from this side. And in fact, there's two ladders here. You see that's a bit symmetrical? So there's a ladder in this direction, and there's also a ladder in this direction. I'll show you the shorter ladder because it's easier. Okay, so that's Atari, that's Atari, that's Atari, okay, that's Atari, and then it's, it doesn't matter, it's finished. Okay, so that means that in this case, um, after okay, after white has cut here, if black wants to capture these white stones, black should defend this cut. And black has a number of ways of doing it. This is the most uh, sort of obvious way. But actually, some some other thing that that black could do, okay, which um, is a little bit more interesting, is to defend it in in a, in a more indirect way by by leaning on the white stones on this side. See, whenever there's a battle, what you want to do is you want to you want to um, press on both sides. You want to exploit the fact that these stones are not that strong either. So what happens if black plays out here? See, black is threatening. Say, let's say white uh, wants to cap these. Stones. Black is threatening to go here, and now these two stones only have two liberties, while these ones still have three. So um, actually, white white is just going to die. That's dead. Okay, so that means that this um, stone here is threatening these two stones. Okay, that means that white should should rescue them in, in some fashion. Um, let's say by playing here, that's a, a reasonable move. And now when white, uh, when black plays here, now white is captured because this move no longer works because black has, has an extra move here. So now black can uh, play here, Atari, doesn't bother, maybe even one more. And we're sort of in the same situation that we looked at before, and boom, um, black uh, connects all his stones and kills these two. Okay, so we see that this uh, cut typically doesn't work um, directly, but um, it's probably better for, in this case, to, to, um, to create a, to use the cut as, uh, as a base for attacking um, the corner and maybe try to gain some outside uh, influence. So if I was um, white, I might play here and maybe black would play here. And um, then I might actually draw out because if I was, you know, I, I might worry about, about black playing something like this. Um, if white plays here, you know, the, okay, it, it's going to get complicated. Um, so instead of that, I would draw out and I would let um, black defend, and I would just um, try to 
make some kind of position here. The idea is that this black group still has to worry because this is a false eye. You see, it has two things looking in on it. So that means that this there's really only one eye here at this stage. Okay, black can play an extra move, but as it stands, there's only one eye. And that means that if I get a few more stones outside here as white, then this thing is surrounded. And then there's the potential of, of attacking this thing uh, severely. Okay, so that is what, what I would do. But on the other hand, it's not um, entirely uh, to white's advantage because black has pressing moves. Both of these groups here on, the, on these sides are, are not settled. So, so black, for example, um, play something like this. You know, uh, and then um, and then white would maybe have to defend somehow. You know, and and in defending would um, would uh, strengthen uh, black's position as well. Okay, so so this is one way that white could move out. But you see, you um, so if black goes like this, um, then uh, this is uh, now two eyes. That's another eye, and there's an eye there. So now the black is completely safe. Black could even play over here. Um, threatening uh, this group. So maybe this group has to run out, something like this. Okay. So, you know, this is the kind of thing that happens in, in, in a game. Um, and so gives you some little bit more experience uh, what it's like to, to play go.